In this lecture, you'll learn how NetApp VSE, the virtual storage console, can be used to configure the recommended best practice settings on your VMware, ESXi hosts, and virtual machines. NetApp Technical Report TR4597, which is VMware vSphere with ONTAP, has an appendix which lists the recommended ESXi host settings. So the best settings to use when you're using ONTAP storage. You can set those settings manually, or you can use vSphere host profiles on your ESXi hosts, or you can automate it with VSC. So configuring them manually would be a very manual and tedious process, not recommended. You could also configure it manually on one host and then create a vSphere host profile so you could use that to push the settings to your other hosts, which is not quite as manual as doing it individually on each one, but it's still not very convenient. So by far the easiest and most convenient method is to use VSC to automate it. So with just a couple of mouse clicks, you can push those settings down to your ESXi host. The other good thing is that VSC will continuously monitor those hosts. So if the settings get changed on one of them by accident somehow, it will alert you to that and then you can fix the problem by pushing the settings back down again. So let's have a look at the actual settings in that TR document first, which comes as a PDF that you can download from the NetApp website. So there's the PDF there. And if I scroll down in here a little bit, it, so it gives you different settings about configuring ONTAP storage with VMware. So it is recommended that you read this. And at the end, there's Appendix B, which is the recommended host settings. So I'll click on that. And you can see there's all these different settings. You could set these manually in VMware, but it would be pretty tedious doing that. So it's much easier to use VSC to do it. Okay, going back to the slides again. So as I said, after those settings have been set, VSC will continuously monitor your hosts and report any which become out of compliance. And NetApp estimate that 75% of configuration problems when you are using VMware with ONTAP storage would be avoided if you did use the recommended host settings. So highly recommended that you do this. It's gonna save you a lot of problems and a lot of troubleshooting. So let's have a look at how we do configure this. So I will go on to the vSphere client and I want to in here go to menu and then virtual storage console and that will land me on the overview page by default. On the overview page, I want to make sure that I click the second tab here, which is traditional dashboard. And then in here, down at the bottom right, you will see how many ESXi hosts you've got, and it will tell you any which do not have the recommended settings. You can see it's split into three settings, the NFS settings, the multipath IO settings, and also the adapter settings. And right now, I can see that multipath is okay, but I'm not using the recommended NFS and adapter settings because right now I've just got the default settings on there. So what I can do is I can click the link to edit the SXI host settings and then it will show me there are my two hosts and I can see that they're not compliant from the red exclamation mark. I want to fix all of my hosts, so I will select them all and then click on next. And then in here, I've got a checkbox to fix the NFS settings and a checkbox to fix the SAN adapter settings and a checkbox to fix the MPIO settings. So I'm just going to tick all of those and then click on next and then click on finish. And VSC is now going to push the recommended settings to my ESXi host. So it's as easy as that. After this is done, then what I want to do is click the refresh button here. And now I can see it's updated my host settings and I can see green ticks for all of them. If any of them get out of compliance somehow later because another administrator changes the settings and brings them out of compliance, I will see it reported in here. So by far the easiest, most convenient way to make sure that your hosts are set with the recommended best practice settings. Okay, back 
to the slides again. And the next host side setting to talk about is the NetApp NFS plugin for VAAI. We spoke about VAAI right near the start of this section. So the NetApp NFS plugin for VMware vStorage APIs for array integration, that's VAAI, is a software plugin for your ESXi hosts, which enables the offloading of certain tasks from the hosts to the storage system. So this aids performance and efficiency. It's downloaded and installed separately from the UVA. So the UVA is what you use to install VSC. VSC, that UVA, OVA file does not include the VAAI plugin, so you download that separately. I'll show you how to do that in a second. It is installed in VSC and then deployed to the ESXi hosts from there. And the reason it's the NFS plugin for VAAI is that VAAI is built in for SAN protocols. So for SAN protocols, it's built in. You don't need to install an additional plugin, but for NFS, you do. So, so we can see what will actually be offloaded. First one is copy offload for VM clones. So if you are using a VM clone, it reduces the copy time and the traffic and CPU utilization on the ESXi host. Because the cloning copy takes place directly on the storage system, it doesn't have to come down and back through the ESXi host. Also native snapshot copies for linked clones. It enables creation of on tap flex clone snapshot copies for linked clones rather than VMware snapshots and the on tap snapshots are better they're more efficient so you want to be using them now notice that this is just for linked clones it does not support offload of normal snapshots from vmware to on tap that is supported with vvols but it's not supported with traditional data stores and lastly space reservation it enables creation of thick virtual disk files on nfs for your vmdk files if you don't have VAAI, they're always going to be thin provisioned. So you can reserve space for the file at the time of creation. Okay, so that is what VAAI does. Let's actually go and configure it now. So the first thing to do is to check that VAAI is supported on the cluster. So I will go back onto VSC again, and then I'll go to storage systems. And I've already discovered cluster two. And if I expand that out, you can see the NFS VAAI is supported. So right now it's supported, but it's not actually enabled. I want to enable it. So the first thing I need to do is to download the software. So in my other tab here, I'm already on the software downloads page on the NetApp website. So to get here, go to mysupport.netapp.com and then log in and then go to downloads and then software will bring you to this page. And if I scroll down, what it is that I want to download is the VAAI plugin. So let me actually, I'll find it easier if I search for VAAI. Okay, there it is. So NetApp NFS plugin for VMware VAAI. And along here, the platform is gonna be ESXi and I click on go and then wait for the page to load. And there's just the, the one latest version available here. I will click on view and download and then scroll to the bottom of the page here and continue. I can also download the supporting documentation on that previous page. Scroll to the bottom again and accept the license agreement. And then in here, there's two available and I want to download the offline bundle. So I click the installation package for the offline bundle and I'm going to download that. It's really small, so it's not going to take long. And I'm going to close this and then I'm going to go into Windows File Explorer and go to my downloads folder. I can see it there and I'm going to extract it. And then when it's extracted, I'm going to go into this vib20 folder and then the plugin folder. And there's the vib file there that I want to install. Now, there's a funny little gotcha here that when I go to install it in VSC, it checks that the file has got the correct file name. So what I need to do is rename this. In fact, I'll show you it not working first so you can see why you need to rename it. Okay, so that is it downloaded. 
So now I'm ready to install it. So I will go back into VSC and then click on settings. And then I'm going to click on the NFS VAAI tools. And by default, I, it's not installed. It does not come built in with VSC. So that's why I need to add it in here. So I'm going to click on the change link here and then browse to where I downloaded that extracted file, which is going to be in my downloads folder and then VIB20 and then NetApp NAS plugin and then double click on that VIB file there. And I'm going to try to upload it and it's going to fail and it tells me that the name should be netappnasplugin.vib so it is actually the correct file but vsc checks the file name as well so what i need to do is go back in here and i'm going to rename that vib file to the name that vsc was expecting okay so that looks good now so now i can go back again and I'm going to browse again, double click the same file just with the correct name now, and then upload it. And this will take a few seconds. And I now see that the existing version is populated there now. So that looks good. It's showing me hosts are not available still. What I need to do is click the refresh button. And then my hosts should show up in here. Maybe have to give it a few seconds. Okay, there we go, there they are. So I can now select all of my hosts and then click on install and it will install the VAAI plugin on my ESXi hosts. Okay, so it's doing the install now. When it has finished installing, I need to give the hosts a reboot as well. So because I'm using a lab here, the way that I'm going to do that is i'm just going to go into vmware that i'm running my local lab and i'm just going to reboot them here real world you would not do that what you would do in the real world is you would use vmotion to move any virtual machines that were running on those hosts to a different host you could then reboot the host while it wasn't running any virtual machines and then you could move the virtual machines back later okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to wait for the installation to complete, which is happening on here now. Okay, so I can see that it has installed successfully there. So what I'm gonna do now is just in this lab environment, I am gonna just brutally reset both of my hosts. So I'll do that, I'll reboot them. And then when that is done, I'm gonna come back, but I'll pause the video for now while I'm rebooting the hosts. Okay, my ESXi hosts have booted up again. Another thing that I did after that is that because my VSC virtual machine, I haven't configured it to auto start, I had to start that virtual machine as well. So after ESXi 1 was up, I'm able to log back into the vSphere client again. On the hosts and clusters page, I expanded ESXi 2, clicked on the VSC virtual machine, and then clicked the green arrow here to power that up. I also left that for about 15 minutes to make sure that all the services are correctly started. So now I've got everything back up and running again. I can check that VAAI is installed correctly on my host. To do that, I need to go into the command line on the hosts to check. And I'm going to SSH into their command line. That's disabled by default. So what I need to do is click on my first host here and then go to configure. And then I should see services in here. There it is. And for SSH, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna start the SSH service. Then I'm gonna open up Putty and I'm going to SSH to the first host was 172.23.1.31. I'm going to log in as root and my password was flatbox1 with an exclamation mark. And then the command that I want to enter here is ESXCLI software viblist. And then I'm going to pipe that to more. And then this is going to take a few seconds to give me the output. And then when it does, let me just maximize this window. 
you can see that the NetApp NAS plugin, which was version 11.2-3, is installed. So VAAI is installed on my first host. I could also do the same thing on the second host, enable SSH on there, open up the command line, and check it is installed there. But it's done okay on host one. So in this lab environment, I'm going to be happy and assume that it's also okay on host two as well. The other thing that I want to do is go into menu and VSC and then click on storage systems. And because I've rebooted VSC, what you want to do in here is click on rediscover all to discover the storage again. I already did that after I rebooted the hosts. And then I can expand cluster two. And if you remember earlier, it said that VAAI was supported. It now shows that VAAI is enabled for NFS on my NAS SVM. Okay, so that is how we enable VAAI. The last thing that I want to show you here is back in the slides again, and that is the guest OS scripts. So what we did earlier in this lecture was we configured the host settings and we enabled VAAI. That was both on the ESXi hosts. We've also got virtual machines running on those hosts as well. And we can also configure the recommended settings for those virtual machines. So there are recommended settings for virtual machines, whether they're running Windows or Linux. And that comes as scripts which you can run inside those virtual machines. So scripts which set the recommended SCSI I.O. timeouts for the virtual machine guest operating systems are available. Both 60 and 190 second scripts are available. 60 seconds is recommended. 190 might be more suitable in your environment if you require a longer timeout. And this is where the scripts are available from. So you see there's scripts for Linux, for Windows, and for Solaris, and it shows the path to get them from here. So I've got that written out in my other window here to save me typing the whole thing out so let me just copy that and then i'm gonna go to my browser so let me open up my browser and i'm gonna paste in that path that i just showed you on the slide so it's the https and then it's the ip address of vsc so remember when you installed vsc you put an ip address on there so it's it's the ip address of vsc not of the vcenter server and then the rest of the path so i'll just show you it for windows here and i'll hit enter and then i'm able to download that iso file so what i do is i download that iso file and then i copy it onto my windows virtual machine and then I run that script and what it does is it's going to update the registry settings in Windows with the recommended settings for when we're using on tap storage. So best practice is to do the host settings in your virtual machines, but at a minimum you want to have VMware tools installed on there. Okay, so that's how we configure the recommended settings for our ESXi hosts and also the guest operating systems in our virtual machines. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. Before you go, I'm excited to let you know about my new ONTAP9 Storage Complete course. It's available this week for special discount launch pricing, but the cart closes this Friday, the 18th October. I'll put a link at the top of the description below where you can find out all the details.